If your brain always chooses what feels good now over what matters later, that's not a motivation problem. That's a dopamine discipline problem. This episode is brought to you by my HarperCollins published book, Mind Over Explicit Matter. Learn how artificial stimulation miswires your brain and what you can do to rewire it back to purpose, intimacy, and connection. Go to drtrishley.com backslash book. We live in the most overstimulated environment in human history. Yet, we still expect our brains to go on and function as if nothing has changed. I'm Dr. Trish Lee, and welcome back to another episode of the podcast with me. In this podcast, we want to walk away from the screen and create a life of super normal living. So today, we're going to talk about how you can actually formulate dopamine discipline And we're going to talk about something called the time horizon, and it's totally awesome. So get a cup of coffee, or if you're on a drive, settle in and buckle up, because this is an important one. Let's dive in and first think about what high performers do. High performers don't win because they have more willpower. They win because their nervous system is trained for the future, not for the very moment that they're in. And I love this feeling. It's the feeling of being content in the present, but always striving toward the future that I want. I want you to feel that feeling too. Okay, so dopamine discipline is the practice of rewarding your future self instead of indulging your present impulses. If your brain can't delay reward, it can't build a future. Dopamine isn't pleasure. Dopamine is anticipation. Dopamine is not about liking. It's about wanting. Robert Sapolsky put it that way. When your brain is constantly flooded with novelty from scrolling, hypersexual stimuli, from algorithmic content that's engineered to hijack your brain, it learns something very dangerous. It learns that reward should arrive immediately without any effort. And that, my friend, weakens the part of your brain that's responsible for planning, for restraint, and for future simulation. Thinking about that future that you want for yourself. That area is the prefrontal cortex. It's also known as the PFC. And in simple terms, overstimulation of the PFC collapses your time horizon. And here's the real cost of overstimulation. You stop caring about your future self. You still want a better life, but your brain can't feel it strongly enough for you to work on it. That's why people feel driven, but disconnected. So this will make you feel busy, but unfulfilled. Motivation will be inconsistent. The problem is when a person can't find a deep sense of meaning, they distract themselves with pleasure. That was said by Viktor Frankl. That's why clarity about what matters most provides clarity about what does not. When your brain knows what matters, the noise loses its power. The elite advantage, it isn't discipline. It's a longer time horizon. Dopamine discipline trains your brain to care more about tomorrow than it does about gratification right now. The time horizon model is so cool. And basically it explains how far into the future your brain is capable of caring and of course, acting upon it. When dopamine is dysregulated, the brain collapses time. Everything becomes now, 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 urgent, impulsive. When dopamine is regulated, time expands and discipline returns very naturally. Okay, so it works this way. Let's start with level one. That's in the next 12 to 24 hours. This is where dopamine discipline starts today, my friend. 
Okay, let me give you a few examples. Things you can do today. Lay out your clothes the night before. So tonight, get ready for tomorrow. Prepare your coffee. Easy peasy. Get things ready so tomorrow when you wake up, it's ready for you. Use this little trick. Clear your desk tonight, each night, before you leave. I was known for this back in my university professor days. And guess what? I still do it every single night, even though I've worked for myself and from my home office for over a decade. It's a game changer. Future self, you're important. This office will be clean tomorrow when you arrive. These are small acts, but neurologically, they send a massive signal. You tell yourself, my future self matters. Okay, level two. Now, once we get through the first 24 hours, now we're working on seven to 30 days from now. Your brain begins to expect delayed reward. Next week and for the next month, your brain is going to get into the cerebral groove, pun intended. This is what we're going to do. Schedule your workouts, then do them. Plan your meals. You have coffee prepped down, now go bigger. Get a few meals planned for the week. Block out time for deep, meaningful work. Remove any apps that you know are a problem before they become a bigger problem, especially explicit matter. Expectation is everything when it comes to dopamine and dopamine discipline. Now, level three. Once we get through the next month, then we're thinking three to 12 months out. This is where motivation stabilizes and it feels amazing. It gives you a sense of accomplishment, discipline, and peace that you could not appreciate until you have it consistently. So these are the things you can focus on. Automatic investing, creating financial peace by having everything organized, skill acquisition, learn something new and spend time each day doing it. Physical training goals. Effort starts to feel satisfying again. The things you're doing lead to a better future self. Then, of course, we have level four. This, my friend, is elite brain function. It happens over the course of years. This is the foundation we're working toward building. If you've been listening to me, you've heard me say it time and time again. Once you recover from the pull back into the screen, especially explicit matter, once you recover, you don't have to fight those urges anymore because you're humming along in a life that you love so much you don't have cravings anymore. Now, I know that might sound like something you can't appreciate or understand quite yet, but I know it to be true from working with tens of thousands of people. When you have meaningful goals, and meaning in the future, it keeps leading you forward. So here's some examples that will happen over the years to come. Financial independence, family leadership, think matriarch like I'm working on, health decisions that compound like compounding interest. They build more and more over time. Overstimulation absolutely destroys this level. It makes it so you can never get to your full potential. Dopamine discipline restores it. Sam didn't lose his ambition. He lost sight of his future. When Sam, the first explicit matter client that I ever helped and the main character in my book, Mind Over Explicit Matter, when he first fell into the screen, nothing looked broken on the outside. He still had goals. He still talked about someday. But neurologically, under the surface, something subtle and devastating had happened. Sam's brain stopped reaching forward. He became present-oriented, not because he was lazy, not because he lacked discipline, but because his dopamine system had been trained, he had trained it inadvertently to expect reward right now not later. So you know what happened, right? The dishes piled up. His work was always put off until tomorrow. His body felt heavy. His mind felt scattered. And planning, even for the next week, felt strangely exhausting. But what Sam didn't realize was this. 
every time he chose instant stimulation over effort, his brain quietly learned a rule. The future doesn't matter. Over time, Sam stopped making small promises to himself, not because he didn't care, but because his brain no longer believed that those promises would pay off. That, my friend, is the real true cost of explicit matter. It doesn't just hijack desire, it collapses time. And here's the empowering part though, because this is where hope returns. Sam didn't recover by forcing motivation. He recovered by restoring his time horizon. One small future protective action at a time. One signal to his brain that said, my future self matters again. And when the brain relearns that, discipline doesn't actually feel like discipline anymore. It feels like coming home to your true self. That, my friend, is what I want for you. This is what you truly deserve, a life on purpose at your full potential. Okay, so here's your brain hack strategy for the day. It is your 30-day dopamine discipline to-do list. For 30 days, don't try to optimize everything. Do one thing. Remove inputs that reward you instantly and instead replace them with actions that reward your future self. So remove algorithmic scrolling, the doom scroll. Remove sexual novelty, explicit matter. Remove reactive consumption and instead replace it with preparation. Replace it with planning. Plan something fun in your real life. Replace it with good old fashioned effort. And replace it with anticipation. Something you're excited about in the real world. This isn't about quitting pleasure. That is not what we're talking about at all. It's about reclaiming direction. If this concept of dopamine discipline is landing for you, I want you to go back and watch the previous video. It's called The Neuroscience of Building Unmatched Self-Discipline. That video explains how discipline is built in the brain. This video shows you where to apply it toward your future self. And guess what? They work together. Discipline without direction turns into burnout. Direction without discipline turns into frustration. When you combine the two, you stop fighting your brain and you start training it. And if you want to know whether your brain is currently wired for instant reward or future planning, that's not something you guess. That's something that you measure. Dopamine discipline is choosing the reward your future self deserves. Thanks for joining me on the podcast. And as always, control your brain or it will control you. I'll see you next time.